channel. Today we're going to be looking at a video covering the mole. The mole is not technically part of the advanced higher course but having an understanding of the mole really does help you with some of the calculations that you're going to have to carry out throughout the course. It'll also help you if you carry on with chemistry further. Having a real understanding of what the mole is and what it means is really good for any courses that you carry on with later. So the mole is a unit of measurement that we use in chemistry. So much like um, other words in life that we use, say a dozen for 12, a pair for two, the mole just represents a number. It represents a really large number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 per mole. Now this is Avogadro's constant, and you'll find this at the back of your data book, and it's often given the symbol L. A mole of metals or a mole of a monatomic gas is the number of atoms which are present. Um, a mole of molecular elements or compounds is the number of molecules that are present and the mole for an ionic compound is the number of formula units. So let's have a look at some examples. So for metals and monatomic gases, if we have a look, so for say sodium, a mole of sodium would contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. The same would apply for neon or helium. So anything which exists as atoms will have a mole of atoms present in it. Molecular things could be diatomic elements. It could be larger elements like uh, sulfur existing in S8 rings, or it could be molecules such as water or methane. For each of these, there would be a mole of molecules. However, if you were to try and work out how many atoms were present for, so here we have, I'm going to represent this as L. So we have a mole of molecules for each of them. But for the atoms, we would have two L atoms for the oxygen. We would have eight L atoms for sulfur we would have three L atoms for water, of which two L would be hydrogen and one L would be oxygen, and we would have five L atoms within methane, one mole being carbon and four moles being hydrogen. Ionic compounds such as sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, would have a mole of formula units which would be sodium chloride however sodium chloride contains one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions that gives it two moles of ions in total magnesium chloride is one mole of magnesium and two moles of chloride ions in total being three moles of ions here are two calculations for you to try calculating the number of molecules in nine grams of water and calculating the number of ions in 100 grams of calcium carbonate Pause the video now and have a try. The first thing we need to do is to work out how many moles are present within our water. So we're going to do a gram formula mass. We have 2 times 1 for hydrogen plus 16 for what for oxygen. That gives us 18 grams per mole. Number of moles is mass divided by gram formula mass. So we have 9 grams divided by 18 grams per mole which means that in total we have 0 0.1, 0 0.5 moles. So we have 0 0.5 moles, which means that for molecules, number of molecules present, we have 0 0.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. That equals 3.01 times 10 to the 23 molecules. If we were to look deeper and look at atoms, we would have three times that for atoms, which would be 9.03 times 10 to the 23 atoms present. Looking at the second example, we're to calculate the number of ions in 100 grams of calcium carbonate. We're going to do the same thing again. We'll be calculating the gram formula mass of calcium carbonate. So we have 40 for calcium, 12 for carbon, and 48 for three oxygens, which gives us a gram formula mass of 100 grams. Number of moles is mass divided by gram formula mass. So we have one mole of calcium carbonate. So we have one mole of this formula unit. However, this is in two ions. So we have Ca2 plus 
and CaO3 2 minus. So we have two ions there. So we have 2 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 ions present, which is 1.204 times 10 to the 24 ions within a mole of calcium carbonate. You'll find that the mole comes up in other places, so you can be asked to calculate the energy of a photon using Planck's constant times the frequency of that photon. One photon would be released or uh, absorbed by one atom. One atom is not usually useful to us in chemistry, so we will scale this up usually to be for a mole of photons or for a mole of atoms. So you'll see this equation in your data book or you may use it in the form um, LHC divided by wavelength, depending on what question you're trying to answer. Another place that you might see this is in numeracy type questions. So pause the video and try this question. For this question, you need to use the equation concentration times volume equals concentration times volume where the moles are being equated. First thing you need to do is write down what the formula is for potassium sulfate. So within 0 0.25 moles per litre of potassium sulfate, you have a different number of ions. So you have 0 0.25 moles of K2SO4 within your litre. However, that splits up into the three different ions, of which two of them are the potassiums. So your potassium ion concentration is actually two times this, which is 0 0.5. We are looking for potassium ion concentration at the end, so we're best to start with that now. So we have 0 0.5 times volume, and we're trying to make a potassium ion concentration of 0 0.125 times the volume. If you rearrange this, so you divide both sides by 0.5, you see that they cancel, giving us a volume of 125 millilitres of the original solution uh, to be diluted to give us 500 mils of a potassium ion concentration of 0 0.125 moles per litre. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter for, at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos.